and then the program says and display it so use a loop to calculate the total sales for the week and display the result we also created a function called print weekly reports remember so print weekly reports needs three things these three arguments we designed in such a way that it needs we have to provide these arguments to it so right below it I believe we have all those three arguments so I can call print weekly sale so print weekly report so print weekly reports needs the days of the week list which we have here so I can go ahead and pass it in here <coughs> Sorry. also it needs the daily sales which we have here so I can go ahead and pass it here and also it needs the total sales which we have here as total daily sales you can call it total sales you can call it total daily sales weekly sale whatever makes sense to you all right so I'm going to pass in total daily sales in here and so print weekly report it's not going to return anything all it's going to do is just print out stuff for us see it's going to print out stuff for us over here and so we're done but um, before anything happens well before you know let, let me go ahead and save it first and I'll explain that I'll point out that so let's save this in desktop Python programming challenges let's create a new folder for chapter 7 I'm going to call this total sales dot pi save all right so so far no errors but the thing is when we try to run the program well first of all well, let, let's try to fix the errors first we have a syntax error here so let's fix that um let's see let me go through this for a second here I'm guessing it's from this the syntax is from this here this the reason why is because when I shift this up here it, it kind of looks like it's together all right so let's hmm. I don't think that's the case too but um, let me see something here let me let me run this see if that fixes it all right, so it does so I think it was from it was from that line it was I think it was close to this okay so let's break it after the plus Okay, let's break it after the plus here. It shouldn't, it shouldn't, you know, cause cause a problem, but I'm um, I'm not sure why. But I can figure it out later. But then let's just let you know. It's just a matter of breaking this line into two. It's just a matter of you know where you are putting your your you know your backslash. In my case, let's just do this and see. Let me try again. Okay, so. I don't know. I, so, so I think it was because it was close. It was close this way. What I did was I think I typed in the backslash and I didn't put a space before hidden enter. I just did this and I hit enter. And in that case, I think it's going to give you an error. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> now I don't know what's happening. Um, if it's together, then I think you get an error. Yep, we get an error. So I think that that's what it was. But although when I hit enter, it fixed it. Anyway, that's the same error I got though. Yeah, so just make sure that if it's together on the same line, you either separate it with a space. Let's see, with a space. Okay, if you separate it with a space, it's giving you an error because if you if you are using your backslash, of course, yeah, you have to enter. Yeah, you have to you have to break it. If you're using a backslash, you have to break it. So if you don't break it, you're going to get an error. But if you're breaking it, let's see if when it's together, you hit enter. It's going to give you an error. No. So what what I don't know. I wish I could go go back in time and and see what happened because I thought that that that's what that's how it was and it gave me an error anyway. Just make sure that um if it's on the same line of course if you if it's on the same line you don't need a backslash. So when you want to you know what <laughs> let me just get past this. So if you want to uh, because I, I I didn't see why the error came the error popped up in the first place. I think maybe there was just a regular syntax error that I just ax um, fixed naturally without knowing how I fixed it. Anyway, so if you want to break this line into two, um, you can break it anywhere, you know, as long as it's not part of the, you know, you're not breaking the variable, the list itself like this, as long as you're not doing something like this. All right, so I'm going to break it after the comma here by typing in a backslash and hit enter. So let's see if this is going to give us an error. No, it doesn't give us an error. All right, so when you run this program, I apologize for that. I just, I just wanted to have a clear sense of what was happening. All right, so when you run this, 
nothing happens because all we've done is just define functions. And when you define functions, nothing happens. You, we need to call, we've created the, the main function here. And even though we are calling the functions the main function, the main function is a function itself and we need to call that in order to kind of kick all this in. So now let's go ahead and, cr and call the main function. All right, so the first thing it says, please enter sales for Monday. I'm going to type in one. Oops, so I'm gonna run this again. So when I try to type something, it starts from the next line. So let's fix that. You want it to start from the end of the line here. So when I type in one, see it starts on the next line. So that's going to be from here. So the print function by default ends with a new line character. What I mean is, after you tell it to, or after you ask it to print what's in the print function, it moves the position from where it's at, from the end of the line to the next line, and anything that comes after that print function continues from that next line going. That's why after it displayed this to us, it moved the position to the next line, and anything that came after it, you know, that's why when I typed, it moved on the next line going. We can change, okay, the print function has an, you know, um, basically an argument that we can, you know, we can pass in here and, and change the ending value. The ending by default is a new line character. We can pass in end um, argument and change its value to nothing, okay? Nothing. So, so this is a space. We don't want to end it with a space. We want to end it with nothing, an empty string, basically. So we are changing the print function's ending character to nothing instead of a new line character. So when it displays this, it's going to it's not going to end it with new line characters. It's going to keep the it's going to end it with nothing. But, so it's going to keep the position at the end of the line. So anything that comes after that print function, after whatever you told it to display, will come right at the, right from the end of the line going. So I'm going to run this now. Let's see if it worked. Yes, it did work. So I'm going to type in one for Monday, two for Tuesday, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So we have an error. Let's fix that too. All right, so, so let's see. Print week, weekly report is not defined. Okay, so I defined the function as print weekly report with, an, with a Y here. But over here, when I was calling the function, I didn't add a Y. So I'm going to fix it. I'm going to run this program again. I'm going to enter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. So it displayed weekly sales report with an underline. Monday sales, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a total weekly sales, tw 28. All right, so when you add this all up, it should be correct, right? So we have three, six, 10, 15, right, 21, and then 28. So that's correct. All right, so let's just format this a little bit. First of all, we, we let's format the number so it reads as monetary values with a dollar sign and all that stuff. <coughs> and then let's just shift this weekly sales down a little bit with a, with a, a line break. Also, let's break this so that the total weekly sales is also displayed on a separate line. First thing I want to do is shift. Okay, after this line here, I want an empty line before the weekly sales reports. So there are w different ways we can do it. So this is the, so let's see over here, one second. All right, so this is basically when we call that function. When we call the first function, Enter daily sales. <coughs> so after after all of it, what we can do is we can create the line break there, or before we type or display weekly sales report, this text here, we can also create a line a line break before that. You can do that. We learned about a new line character. I can place a new line character right before it, right before it. So when I run this, I type in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can see that the new line character basically moved the position from where it's at. Okay, so it was it was basically right at the end of that. So let's just let me let me, let me just shift this. So let, let me undo, just so you see how it was before. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So by placing the new line character here, it's going to move the position from where it's at to the next line down, and anything that comes after the new line character will be displayed. On, from, you know, from that, from the next line going, we are placing a new line character here, backslash n. Okay, so it's going to shift this weekly sales report 
down it's going to create a new line character before the weekly sales report before anything anything that comes after the new line character will be displayed from that next line going okay so we can see that that has been fixed I mean based on what we want though all right so next thing I want to do is I want to do the same thing for total weekly sales I want that okay to be displayed on its own line with a with, a, with an empty line above it so there are a bunch of ways we can do that too we can before we display the total weekly sales which is here we can also add a new line character backslash n or we can also we or we can add a new line character after all the all the you know daily sales with the days have been displayed so um, so that, that's also another option so i'm going to run this program try again one two three four five six seven and we can see there's a new line here it's a new line here so it kind of looks a little bit um nice now let's format the, the value so they display as monetary values so let's access these values and they are here in this is a loop that's in, in the print weekly report function this is the loop that is displaying our values and this is the value here so this displays the day of the week okay the the, the, the string name and this second argument Is, is, our, is our value so we can I'm going to pass the format function around it I'm going to pass the format function around that value now the format function takes in a couple of arguments it takes in what you want to format and how you wanted it how you want it formatted as a format string so this is what I want to format this value here and as another argument as a format string I'm going to specify how I want it formatted so I want it formatted as a floating point value so I'm going to type in F okay and then I want it formatted to two decimal places so I'm going to specify the precision before okay the, the type or be, be, yeah before the type so I'm going to type in point 0.2 because I want to format it to, to two decimal places if I wanted to if I wanted to format it to, to three decimal places I'll do point 0.3 so I'm specifying the precision before okay the, the type over here so point 0.2 the decimal places is fine and again this is one entire argument the format function returns a string so I'm going to concatenate the dollar sign before the you know the, the string that is returned from the format function so before that I'm going to type in a string and I'm going to concatenate it with the formatted version of the, the particular the daily sale for this particular current day okay it's all going to be a string. When you're concatenating a string to a string, there, there are no problems. All right. And I'm going to do the same thing for total sales. I'm going to call the format function around total sales. The format function takes in two arguments, how you, what you want to format and how you want to format it. This is what I want to format. And in a, form, in a string, as a format string, I'm going to specify how I want this formatted. So I want it formatted as a floating point value. The precision comes before the type. I want it formatted to two decimal places. I'm going to type in 0.2 and I'm done. So let me run this again. Type in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So now we can see that this the dollar sign is placed in front of it with you know formatted to two decimal places. We didn't add the dollar sign here, but we can. So dollar sign, the string, the dollar sign here, and I'm going to concatenate that dollar sign to the formatted version of total sales all as one argument here same thing here this all as one argument okay all as one argument here all right so let's try with different values let's do two 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 and then one and you can see that's correct all right so two six twelve over here and then one all right so i know that i was talking you know left and right <laughs> in this um, it's, it's been a while since I did a Python video so maybe that's why I'm a bit, I'm a bit rusty but again uh, once I do a few of these I should be should be a bit uh, smooth I guess <laughs> which I, I always seem you know to never be all right anyway we're done if you have any questions please comments down below and I'll do everything to respond to them thank you very much for watching take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time in the next program all right then bye bye